I'm gonna shoot a little video showing my oil blow-by on my uh, new Ram 1500 EcoDiesel. So can you see that? Can you see how oil's popping up and you see like little spurts of oil? That's from the lifters spitting oil out. But this blow-by, that's oil. And you see how my valve cover's already wet. And my uh, engine cover there, it's already getting soaked with oil. So the way Dodge has this going in is there's a little breather under here. That breather tube right there. That goes right back into the turbo. It just goes right in there, non-filtered, no nothing. And so that oil comes through, goes into your intercooler line, comes down, and that oil condenses at the bottom of your intercooler and fills your intercooler up until you start getting over boost problems. And this is designed to blow off. This boot will blow off when you build up too much boost. So what I've done is I've uh, experimented quite a bit. Um, I've tried relocating this flow meter. This is actually in your uh, air intake tube. And this monitors the blow by gases coming out and make sure that your flow is correct. So I relocated that. This is just preliminary. I've been testing some different designs. I put a clear tube here. Uh, you can see a lot of oil in there. And then I gotta go back into my air intake this way, um, I got a new design that I'm going to build where I've taken uh, a BMW and this one is a uh, Land Rover. This one's off of a Land Rover. So this is what I've done with my intake. So I put a foam filter down to help uh, separate that oil mist, you can see that. It's clearly definitely not as bad. And I don't have a lot of uh, oil build up down there. This, this new catch can is working a lot better. This is temporary. Hang on. So what I did was uh, I got a kind of a temporary catch can down there to see how much oil I would collect. And uh, let me see if I can pull it off. All right, so this is after a week of my driving. This is what that one's collected. So you know what the crappy thing is that I'm noticing in all my collections when I've been collecting all this oil? Is uh, there are metal particles down there, and it's been like that every time I've drained these. There is metal, and shavings, and some kind of dirt particles. Uh, it's nasty. So this oil right here that's inside of this container is going right into the turbo, hitting the turbo blades, which will cause the, uh, when the turbo blades are spooled up, if any kind of uh, water or oil or anything touches them blades at high speed, uh, that you will get chipping and pitting. And uh, so this is going past the turbo blade. And uh, if any of this dirt and shit gets into the intercooler, gets past the intercooler, um, that's going right into your intake valves and into the top of your engine. And uh, this oil vapor uh, will go through and it will clog up your SCR and your DPF filter. And uh, if you have an EGR, like let's say on a Cummins or a Power Junk, uh, that will clog the EGR up first. And uh, that's actually the problem with Fords. So, uh, you know, if people bought a brand new Ford and put a 
catch counter bypass this oil right away they would save their EGR coolers and their EGRs from clogging up and destroying themselves but yeah that's that's quite a bit of oil uh, after a week of driving and there's sludge at the bottom um, you know I do have a check engine light I've got two codes that I wor keep working on trying to get them off um, I know how to get one of them off the PO5 uh, 1B I can get that one off that's just uh, I got a turbo boost line that I hooked up and as long as it sees a flow of air going past it it's fine but the PO4 DB that one's my enemy I, I can't get that off but you know after seeing this sludge and uh, I I don't know if you guys can see that but this is a clean catch can I can clean these out with brake cleaner put it back on I've done this for a month uh, 10,000 miles of driving well a little over that I started this at 8,000 I got 21,000 on it right now and uh, every time I change it dude this thing has got sludge and some kind of nasty dirt chunks or metal or something I, I haven't sent this into a lab I'm thinking about sending this into a lab I want to find out what the hell that is but you know, I'm not putting that back into my turbo. Um, there's a little bit of mist coming out of there, not much. Um, you got to know that Dodge did threaten to void my warranty. So, you know, they're being douchebags, but, you know, there's my check engine light. Um, yeah, I got 21,840 miles on her. So, but that's what I'm working on. Uh, I do have a boost line coming out of here. Now, if you hook up boost line to this hose here, and you got a little connector, and you, as boost increases, this right here is what causes uh, PO51B. I believe that's what code it is. Uh, and if you put the boost line in there, this it, that code will not ever pop up. And then the uh, PO4DB is a pressure, and it monitors vacuum. It checks the vacuum, and this little turbo fitting back there that causes not quite one uh, pound of vacuum. It's 0.84 uh, vacuum on this sensor right here. Now there's a port coming out right here, and this, that's what this sensor does, is monitors that. And uh, I don't have a way to create the perfect amount of vacuum. I'm really working on it. Uh, as soon as I can isolate that, I'll have no check engine lights. But the way my new design is going to work is it's going to come out uh, right here. So I'll have the breather coming out, going into this can here. And then I'm going to be using the BMW uh, catch can. So come over like this, go into the BMW catch can, which is both fittings are pointing that way. So one will come in and then one will come out and possibly go back into the original intake. But I've, I've got to get this. You can see how much shit. I hope you can see. Oh my God. That one side is completely sludged up. Oh, you can. Haha, <laughs> look at that. Look at that sludge. That is coming out of your crankcase breather and I don't care what kind of oil you're using this is the dealer's oil this oil can right here was brand new before I did the dealer oil change not my oil change but the dealer oil change this is their dealer oil and look at that sludge so people are gonna say well you're not using the right oil bullshit there it is dude that's you know I've done this since 8,000 miles and look at that look at that sludge that's at the bottom of your intercooler that goes into your intercooler right there and that fills that up you can't get that out that doesn't blow through that doesn't come through and clean itself out of your intercooler so I'm making this video to show people um, this is a pretty stupid design flaw this is a great truck you know, I wish that the damn check engine light wouldn't be on because I'm not defeating, the way I've done it, I'm not defeating the uh, federal emissions. Um, this is still EPA compliant the way I've done it because it's still a closed loop system. Uh, it still gets recirculated, but I've, uh, I've got a foam filter in there that I keep clean 
and uh, so it's not getting all this nasty sludge and whatever that dirt is that's getting through this. Uh, so this is a, called a centrifugal force oil separator made by Land Rover. Um, this is an original part. I also have an original uh, centrifugal force for the BMWs. And uh, so I'm going to have double cyclonic filtration before it goes back into the intake. So uh, I hope you enjoy this video and I hope you can learn something. Um, I do have a form on ram1500.com where I have a builder shred that I've been trying to inspire people to create something but nobody has the balls to do it they're scared uh, they don't think that it's a problem and uh, you know this sludge at the bottom of this can this is this is proof of the problem I mean th this this should be proof to people I mean I, can, I look at that up there in that corner watch it there it goes that's sludge it's like some kind of tar nastiness up there it's coming down so i hope people can respect what i'm doing and see and try to be creative um not running into very creative or intelligent people anymore in this society people are very lazy skeptical um you know it's really hard to find other engineers out there who have what it takes to be able to design and create something and, and uh Everybody thinks right now vehicles are perfect when they come out of the factory and you shouldn't touch them But this is why we are engineers in this society and this is why you go to school. This is why you learn and uh, This is why you create and develop and design things uh, This is something that I do With every vehicle because I know that every vehicle is not perfect but You know, they're not going to design this kind of system in a truck like this because nobody touches them, nobody maintains them, nobody cares about them. And uh, that's what happened with the uh, 6.4 and the 6.7 Cummins. What was it? 6.7 Cummins. Uh, nobody's changing their uh, filter, their crankcase filter. And uh, caused leaks everywhere and lots of emission cooler pro EGR cooler problems. So I think that they just said, fuck it, people don't want to touch their trucks or maintain them. So let's just put it in there and they can replace shit when it goes out. So, yeah, this is what I'm doing. Um, that's why I do stuff. So, alright, have a good day.